Welcome to the March 7th, 2022 meeting of the Rotary Club of Jamestown. Please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance, singing of our national anthem, and repeating the four-way test. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, say, can you see? Let us repeat the four-way test. Of the things you say or do, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? And will it be beneficial to all concerned? And please remain standing for our invocation. Good afternoon. Um, this is more inspirational, I hope. Um, Rotary was the first service organization and the first organization of diverse members to go international. Yet Paul Harris did not believe that its success was based on its originality. Instead, he attributed its success, our success, to the hard work of mem our members, which is probably true today. Rotary is special because Rotarians are special. They care, they act, and they give of themselves. So Rotarians help at home and they go all over the world to help. We know about our Polio Plus work and now we have work in Ukraine. In response to the deepening humanitarian crisis in Ukraine, the Rotary Foundation has created an official channel for Rotary members around the world to contribute funds to support the relief efforts underway by Rotary districts and has designated its disaster response fund as the main avenue for contributions. So we make the contributions and then the clubs near Ukraine are able to ask for up to $50,000 to buy supplies and needs to send into Ukraine. We can even apply for a grant if we have a way to help Ukraine as well of up to 25,000. So that's how our money will be used. So each of you received an email this week uh, which will make it easier to contribute. And I see that Kevin's put these on the table as well. So it's the same, it's the email that you received. So there's no excuse for us not to help. So let's bow our heads. Lord, we pray for your guidance during this difficult time. While we cannot help directly in Eastern Europe, we can help those around us. Help us be aware of those around us who are in need of our help. You know who they are and you know what we can do. Amen. And welcome John Healy to welcome our visiting Rotarians and guests. Okay, we got quite a few guests today. So Karen Lisley, guest of Joni Blackman, she's with the Faulkner Club. Linda Kent is guest of Stacy Hanna. June Dietrich, wife of Russ. And Normine Ahmed, a JCC student from Egypt, is a guest of Courtney Cotula. And online, we have Michelle Stallwalt Jones, Melanie Wachowski, and Jean West.
Our Rotarily Yours recorder today is Ruth Lundin. And as, as always, we thank the committee for all your hard work. Uh, as you already know, as in response to CDC changes, uh, masks are now optional for our meetings. Um, please wear them if you feel comfortable. Uh, Joni already addressed the, uh, the email that went out from District Governor Ann Birmingham this weekend. Uh, I did leave copies on your table. If you have any other questions or if you have thoughts on how our club can be of service, uh, please share them with myself or Ruth or John or somebody on the board. Uh, if you have not picked up your tickets, so I guess I'm talking to those of you online, we have raffle tickets available with your names on them. Please let me know the best way to get them to you. Uh, for those of you that do have your tickets, please make sure they're back by March 25th um, so that we can draw them on the Monday, March 28th meeting. If you need more tickets, please let me know. We do have plenty. Um, and there are only 500 tickets for sale, so we want to sell all of them. With that, Michelle Jones Farch. There she is. So you all have your very special invitation. I also emailed everybody again to remind you we have a good turnout so far. So I'd love to see more and more of you bring friends. Great place to get to know people. Farch is going to be a St. Patrick's Day theme. We're going to have some trivia, some fun games and prizes. Uh, get to see in person people again at Moonbrook Country Club. It'll be from 6 to 8 p.m. in replace of this meeting. Um, email me. There's a registration online. You can, and we'd love to see as many people as we can get there just because it's just kind of a nice way to get together with people. So it's $25 per person and we hope we see everybody there. Thank you. And Ruth, I believe you have some DEI information. Yes, just a reminder that the next meeting of the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee will be on Tuesday, March 15th at 2 o'clock by Zoom. And anyone who would be interested in participating, please let me know, or Chris Anderson. Um, I also wanted to announce for exchange, just a reminder that we have an outgoing uh, Rotary student going on exchange next year which means that we need families for an inbound student. We need three families. Usually the student stays with three families over the course of the year. And right now we tentatively have one family in the Southwestern School District. So we're sort of looking for focusing on Southwestern School District. Although that's still open if, if you are in a different school district. If you're interested or know someone who might be interested in hosting a student, I encourage you to get in touch with Sherry um, to learn more about it and uh, or Chris Anderson or who's here today. Who else? Raise your hand if you've had an exchange student. So you can see hands of people. You can talk to them. It's a wonderful experience. You don't have to have a high school age child in your family, uh, but we, you will need to be registered with the district and have a background check. So. Um, the student will also need an advisor who's just like a mentor um, during the course of the of the school year. So please think about that if that if something you would like to do. So thank you. Thanks, Ruth. Are there any other announcements from committee chairs? All right. With that, Joni Blackman, birthday table duty. So the birthday table is empty because I sat somewhere else. Um, but I know there's two people online who have birthdays, so I'm going to I'm going to make fun of you. No. OK, so the first one. Now, you know, when you make your donation in honor of your own birthday, that goes to our foundation, um, which uh, helps with all the work we talk about all the time with Rotary International. So our first birthday boy is Doug Conroe. Where is he? Is that him? Yeah, I thought so. He's put his back to me. I noticed that. Um, his birthday is March 10th. He's the executive director of the Chautauqua Lake Association. 
He went to Kent State University and is, yay, and is retired director of operations from Chautauqua Institution. And his sponsor was Harold Peterson back in 1981. And he has four Paul Harris fellows. Yes, in 1981, and he's still walking around. Four Paul Harris fellows. You can make fun of me later, Doug. Okay. Next, we have Dudley or Spud Erickson, who we haven't seen in a little while. Um, his birthday is the same as Doug's, March 10th. He has retired from the HR uh, department at WCA Hospital. He went to what school? Come on now. You remember Michigan. Very good. If you were here when Dudley was here, you knew he supported Michigan State University. Um, he was president of our district from 1978 to 79, and he was district chair polio, plus, district of the, excuse me, chair of the polio plus uh, committee from 2003 to 2008 on the district level. Gordy Black was his sponsor in 1970. So you got a few years, Doug. Um, and he has five Paul Harris fellows. Happy birthday, Dudley. Next is Donna Flinchbaugh. Donna, uh, her birthday is March 22nd. She's the branch manager at Northwest Bank in Faulkner. I just saw her last week, as a matter of fact. She went to JCC and the Houghton Pace um, program. And ironically, Dudley Erickson sponsored her in, in 2011. Happy birthday, Donna. Next is Robert Anderson, who is right somewhere. I saw him. Didn't I see him? Was he online? I thought he was online. Uh, maybe I'm hallucinating again. His birthday is March 23rd. Uh, Robert, or Bob, is the superintendent of the Gwanda Central School District. So he's had a lot of time on his hands over the past two years. Uh, he went to JCC, SUNY Fredonia, and the University of Nevada in Las Vegas. Um, he is a, his sponsor was Steve Sandberg, and that was in December of 2020. Happy birthday, Bob. And Sherry Kroll, happy birthday. There she is. See, her? see, her? see. Her? Um, March 23rd. Wait a minute. You and Bob have the same birthday, huh? How exciting. March 23rd. Um, she, um, you work for Boldly right? You work at home, you are an executive assistant for the company and also help other companies do their payroll and lots of different things. I'm only stumbling through this because it says you work at Squirrel Hill Consulting, <laughs> which I just think is kind of ironic because I always give you all a hard time for not updating your profile. And she's a past president and she hasn't updated her profile, but we love Sherry. So um, Sherry was sponsored by Lisa Yagi in 2014 and she's past president of the club 2019 to 20. She helped me a lot in my year and she has two Paul Harris fellows. Happy birthday, Sherry. And I don't know if it's last. Nope. Pat Kinney is next. Pat usually sits right over there where, right over there, where Lynn is. Her birthday is March 28th, and she's roaming around Florida at this point, I believe. She's retired from government work, used to work with Sally at the Greater Empire Zone, Greater Jamestown Empire Zone. Um, she was sponsored by Michael Bennett. Isn't he a singer or something? Oh, uh, someone, someone different, <laughs> different guy. Um, anyway, in 1980, so she, wait a minute, 1990. So that's why I brought my glasses, 1990. She has two Paul Harris fellows. Happy birthday, Pat. And last, yes, last we have Gail Donis. Gail's birthday is the end of the month, March 31st. She went to Frostburg University and McDaniel College, and she was sponsored by Diana Meckley. Where are you? There you are. Um, in 2016, and she has, let me count them, seven Paul Harris Fellows. So she wins the Paul 
Harris Fellow Award Award today. Happy birthday, Gail. So we need to pick a winner. All right, different winner. This is for lunch. This is for free lunch. Yay, it's somebody who actually eats lunch. It's uh, for Doug. See? It pays to have me razz on you. Okay. So we have to sing happy birthday to the March Shamrocks. I don't know. Okay. All right. You're not a weed. I mean, really. Let's say Shamrocks. Okay. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, March Shamrocks. Happy birthday to you. Okay. Melissa Myers, it's time for 50-50. Everyone break out your tickets. Have our visitor pull the ticket, won't you? Right there, on the corner. $44 to the winner. You're gonna make a friend. Six one five. Six one five. Okay, you're out. Sally. And here's one of our birthday celebrants, Doug Conroe, Sergeant at Arms. Happy birthday to me. <laughs> Happy birthday. Ah, this is a good month. So. Thank you. Russ Dietrich uh, celebrates his wife's birthday in March also. And I, I see a face I haven't seen in a while. And he can contribute electronically. Mike Boots, welcome back. And we will look forward to that. That's good. Hopefully we'll see you at Farch. Uh, Kurt, you missed it last week. Chautauqua Leadership Network. Everyone else contributed and I know you didn't do not want to be left out of that. That was a good picture. It must have been there. And then, you know, there was on this date, Daniel Webster gave a great speech and it reminded me of other great speech makers. And we have in the room a person who gave the primary expo speech at the DAR Patriots Day luncheon. All DAR members. <laughs> All, right. All DAR members. Okay. Okay. You're, in yeah, you're gone. Okay. Can't be. Can't be. One one piece of trivia I he probably didn't mention because it was affected Massachusetts. Now in this state, Massachusetts established the first bicameral legislature in the United States. Kind of interesting things. Great another march happening. Oh, okay, Jody. You, you, you suggested that I recognize you. So, on this date in 1702, Queen Anne assumed the throne. What was uh, distinguishing about her reign? <laughs> now that was Anne Boleyn. Um, You give up? 
Yeah. She was the last monarch of the Stuart family. So, yeah, do you know? Okay. So, well, come on up. Okay. So there are a bunch of other things. Uh, I found out this morning my my retirement portfolio went down. You know, stock exchange was formed on this date in 1817. Uh, I hope it had better results than it's having today. Now, in this week's Gazette, they are recognizing Women's History Month. And pitcher is our own Lucy Miller. We miss her. Especially yes. When we oh, boy, do we. Yeah. And Helen Merrill. Helen and Norm's actually pitcher. So I would suggest that in appreciation of Women's History Month, every man in the room come forward and put something in the pot. Yeah. And I'll lead it off. Okay. David's asking me for the dollar. I'll tell you. Okay. Thank you. You know? Yeah, happy yeah. bucks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, we're coming up for those. If there's any happy bucks. Since there's a lot of you. I'm talking about the Lucille Ball Little Theater. So to honor Helen and Lucy, you should come see the show this weekend because the funds all go to support the theater and some great shows that we're hoping to have in the fall because the doors are open. So we'd love to see you. Um, I've been very trying not to say it, but I am in it and it's my first show and it's going pretty well and I haven't fallen or hurt myself. So it's all good, but it's a great show. It's a lot of fun. I, I just, in honor of them, come see it. I'm gonna do this as a happy buck. So I have a guest today, it's Rudy and Alora. And you may have remembered he was part of a, one of the speakers uh, back in the fall about uh, Jamestown Pride. And he is now, oh, Rudy, I've already forgotten. He is now, oh, I, you gave it to me, Project Manager of Global Learning at JCC, in addition to being uh, one of the dance instructors at the Chautauqua Regional Ballet. Hi, I'm Karen Livesey. Some of you know I'm here from Faulkner. Um, advertising our pancake breakfast is coming up on the 26th of March. Um, I usually have a big poster, but I don't. I have tickets. Um, it's going to be at the Falcon's Nest in Faulkner, 7.30 to 10.30 on Saturday morning. $9 a ticket, children under 12, I think, are $5. The reason I don't have a poster with me is we're having it reprinted. We're having it reprinted because we have decided that the proceeds from our pancake breakfast and any donations that we get that day will be going to the Rotary Foundation for the D Disaster Relief Fund for Ukraine. So come on out and have some pancakes. Um, Yes. Oh, I forgot. We had a president a few years ago that liked waffles. So we are doing pancakes and waffles. Yep. Yep, we put him to work because he wants waffles. So um, come on out. Um, you can have pancakes and waffles if you can't decide. Um, and it comes with eggs and sausage, orange juice, coffee. So come on out. Uh, as I say, the proceeds will be going to uh, the relief fund for Ukraine. 7.30 to 10.30 at the Falcon's Nest. AM. Yeah. It's breakfast. I know people can have breakfast any time of the 24 hours, but it's, it's breakfast in the morning. Thank you, Karen. I didn't think it was legal not that early, but uh, we'll try. <laughs> even even earlier would be better, right? I have two happy bucks today. I'm just going to play Proud Papa one more time. Uh, we were just informed this week that our daughter Kate was just awarded an honorary doctorate degree from the University of Lucerne in Switzerland in economics and marketing. 
So she's a real bright kid. She takes after her mom. <laughs> and as uh, somebody's already mentioned, uh, our own favorite uh, Lucy here today in the Jamestown Gazette. I spoke with her this week, and she, of course, can't get out very much right now, but she said she would love to be here for her birthday in June. And what she needs is a ride. So I said, if I tell everybody, you'll have 17 cars right out there waiting for you. So there's a buck for Lucy. See what you can do to get her here. Thanks, Walt. Uh, Michelle. Uh, I'll donate online. I just wanted to say congratulations to everybody. Um, all five of our clubs in Chautauqua County was present at the uh, district gala and our district 7090 had the most registrants who bought tickets from any other club in zones 28 and 32, which was quite a feat. And we passed our fundraising goal by over $5,000, uh, which was extremely exciting. So uh, thank you again. I, I think it was Ruth perhaps that was online that night. So uh, thank you so much for supporting and participating in the Gala Foundation. All right. Well, it's my pleasure to bring up Kirk Young to introduce a couple that needs no introduction. Sue, did you have something? Okay. Kirk here? Ah. Well, <laughs> I'm going to keep it real simple. David and Melissa are back, or Marissa, I'm sorry, and uh, welcome. Yep. We have this, and this is where I am. So join you want to join video? the video, or yeah, you can join the video because we've got video everywhere else. Podium, yeah, it'll be fine. Very strange to be back in March. Yeah. Yeah. So We're usually doing this in June or July. Um, so I'll just show you a couple of things. Uh, oh, no, no, no. Use the microphone. Okay. Sorry. Most of you know that Marissa and I will be talking about uh, one of our international projects today. That's the one that we just uh, finished up in Pakistan. Um, here's a great hat that says, Polio free Pakistan, and um, where we spend some time. No, I don't. Okay. Fine. Here's another silly hat, as long as we're doing this. Um, this is what people wear in Pakistan. And I, Marissa really wants me to put this on. I, He's so cute in it. Really, everybody has a silly hat picture. There you go. Oh, wait, no, it's the, uh, this is a traditional hat from Karachi in this. It's in the Sindh district of Pakistan. And this is the traditional Sindh hat. S-I-N-D-H, I think. Yes, the, yeah. No, that is the way you wear it. <laughs> so are we live here and we have to. We've got one little thing in the middle. All right. Um, I'm going to put a couple of pages up here uh, that some of you have seen, but for the benefit of new members that don't know about some of our direct uh, international projects, uh, Rotary Club and the foundation and the whole international um, organization does an awful lot around the world, and we all know that. And, um, and frequently, this club will donate money to some of those international trusts and whatever, and uh, once a year, we get a project together that we do directly with another Rotary Club um, internationally. Uh, and Marissa and I have been fortunate enough to head that up for the last uh, eight or so years. Uh, but we do work directly with the vision committee and very closely. But so you all know, uh, this is kind of, these are some of the projects that we've done. This is where these, 
these are areas where you can actually see pictures of uh, donations that we made around the world. Um, but I'll just quickly go through this. We started off in 2013. A lot of you probably remember that project where we funded a women's weaving cooperative in Nepal. And those women got an awful lot out of it. They got an education, they got uh, new weaving skills, they <laughs> get new weaving skills. Uh, for a couple of years, we were associated with the Cambodia Academy, which is um, a rotary uh, school in the very poor area of, of uh, Cam Cambodia. Uh, we put in new playground grass for them and our uh, literacy committee sent boxes of books for them, which was great. Uh, we worked with uh, SAVA to do some eye screening because we realized there weren't any eyeglasses in a school. And uh, so we worked with uh, that and got some of these kids to see better. In 2016, we put in a wa water filtration. That little girl is now in high school. Oh, doing well. great. Um, and then we moved up to uh, Myanmar. And again, we did this in concert with the Rotary Club of Yangon, it used to be Rangoon. Uh, and we donated money to put in uh, some clean toilets in a primary school where there weren't any toilets and you a water system. little elementary school kids so happy about toilets. Yeah, that was a great project. Uh, we went back to Cambodia Academy in 2018 for some hand washing sinks. Um, and uh, in 2018, uh, 19, we partnered with the Rotary Club in Addis Ababa. Uh, there was, um, that's a rough place. And um, so there's a lot of hungry kids there. And we had, we uh, came across a school where there were hungry kids, but there was, what made it special was there was an NGO that was willing to feed them. But they said, there's no safe place for them to have food. The gangs will run through and steal the food. So how about building us a cafeteria? So this club dug in its pockets again and came up with $5,000 and got matching funds from the Archdiocese and, and Addis Ababa in Ethiopia and built this um, cafeteria. And then our uh, last project before this one was uh, in Tanzania, uh, in Moshi. Uh, and we partnered with uh, the Rotary Club of Canberra Well in Australia and uh, redid toilets, put in hand washing. It was a school that had a lot of trouble with diarrhea and liver disease. And it was a great project and we cleaned that up, it was nice. So. Uh, those are just some of the projects we've done in case, you know, some of you are new members and don't know what we've been doing. So this takes us to polio and we're very close to ending polio. We all know that. And we um, had a connection with the Rotary Club in Thailand that I, I attend when, and Marissa comes along when we're overseas for the winters. Uh, and so we had a connection through that with Karachi. And uh, that's one of the last countries. So it seemed like a fitting thing if we could help them out to take care of this. So um, just a little something about the rodeo, uh, the Polio Plus campaign. As uh, Rotary International started it in 1981 with WHO, most of you know this. Um, at that time, there were about 350,000 cases of polio in 125 countries. Um, UNICEF and CDC have joined along the way. And in 2007, the Gates Foundation began a dollar for dollar match with Rotary International. That was a big shot in the arm. That was when we were in Indonesia and Africa and we really needed the money, it was great. Um, Rotary International Foundation has itself contributed more than $2 billion. And our club in Jamestown has donated over $200,000 for Rotary. Um, currently from the original 1981 list, 123 countries have been cleared of polio. So we're left with two, Pakistan and Afghanistan. And, um, Here's a little graphic showing you what it looked like in 1988. Uh, by then, North America had been cleared a lot of Europe, but we still had lots of polio here. And here we are in 2021, two little countries side by side, Pakistan and Afghanistan. So that doesn't mean it's over. That just means that if we stop, we are, we're gonna go roll backwards. So we need to double down and stay at it. So that was what this project was all about. Um, we had never been to Pakistan, so that was, I mean, we're not strangers to world travel, but- we had to do is get the visa. Yes, the visa is very complicated, and uh, a lot of that has to do with security. Um, and the Rotary Club in um, Karachi really doubled down on this one, and they had to take a huge amount of responsibility for us to get into the country. Uh, for our well-being, um, they were joking and saying, the president said, we have graduated from being a terrorist state to becoming a police state now. 
And the good thing about that is at least you can bribe the police. So it was, uh, there was a lot of security, which you'll see uh, involved in this, but they were just a really great, great um, Amazing host club. Hosts. So hop on the plane, you go to Dubai, uh, out of LA. This is an interesting um, um, shot. This is a, tells you where Mecca is and which direction to pray when you're in a plane going there. Cause it's very Muslim part of the world. Um, this is landing in Karachi at three o'clock in the morning. It was filled with people and we were the last people out. But the Rotary Club people came down and picked us up in the middle of the night and took us, um, took us to a place to stay. We thought we were gonna stay in a hotel and have a taxi. And they said, no, we will meet you. And you are staying at the Sindh Club, which is a very uh, secure location and sort of a high-end um, place to stay. Um, I think it was nice rooms. I think it was about $100 a night or something. We paid for that because we always pay for our way on these things. Um, but it was a nice room. And so, great room. yeah. Great. So we were all set to go there and inspect this clinic. They said it would be in three days because that's when the grand opening is scheduled. They'd already had a soft opening. So we had time on our hands. We thought we were going to see Pakistan, but they said you will not be living, leaving the city limits of Karachi unless you're escorting, you're not going to go very far. So we said, okay. At um, one point, we tried to get our own Uber car to see if we could just get out on our own. And after they said it'll be coming in a half an hour, it'll be coming in a half an hour, it, it occurred to us after a few days, it was never going to come. <laughs> we were never going to, to, we did two times. We got away a little bit. We'll talk about that. Um, every morning they delivered a paper called The Dawn, and here's one yeah, headline from the Taliban. Women shouldn't be forced into marriage. Good. This is, uh, go ahead. But the thing about that is it shows the Taliban in a slightly different light, and I think it's important for everyone to see that, that they're working towards something else also. We may not necessarily agree with it, but they're working. And if they're working, that means that there is a chance for us to work together. Oh, that's a great point. Uh, this is the outside of the Sin Club. And uh, so our people came, there's a silly hat picture again. Um, this woman's name is uh, Shadzadi Mansour and she is part of the Millennium Club in Karachi and she helped organize the, uh, the clinic idea. Um, and uh, here's Zina Bahad and she was also, uh, she's active in the club and she, this person and uh, and uh, JW Solhay were sort of key in getting us around and making sure we got to places on time. That's sort of thing. very helpful. So we met them and then uh, we went, uh, we were scheduled to go out and do a little sightseeing. So we went outside and this was the beginning of how it looked for every day. And we called it the squad. Yeah, we had a squad with us, a uh, pickup truck with about a half a dozen guys with AK-47s, every place we went, they were behind us, the siren was going. Um, and they were that, really nice though. Very nice people. And um, you know, it was just the way they wanted it. And uh, it's the way the Rotary Club wanted it. And it's not unusual to see that over there. So uh, this is Karachi. It's got lots of people, kind of cluttered. Mostly men on the street, but you see women also. Um, there so here's a bus. They really like doing up their buses. There are a lot of countries like that. But, um, lots of traffic. Lots of and it doesn't move very fast. But uh, So we were going to visit. The first place we visited was a pet project of uh, the Karachi Club. It's uh, St. Peter and Paul's Catholic Church. And there's a um, an orphanage there called the Don Bosco Orphanage. And... Um, the uh, Rotary Club has contributed an awful lot to that in the school, and they wanted to show us that since we weren't going to the clinic for a couple of days. Um, I thought this was fun. The seven habits of a smart boy. Have you clean teeth, polished shoes, fingers and toenails cut, <laughs> clean and pressed uniform, hair properly cut and neatly combed, a handkerchief and a smile upon your face. I thought that was kind of fun. Sort of very old school, huh? Uh, here's a guy who was really proud of his showing us his book. There was some English in there. It was hard to read, but. Uh, Lesson for Monday. Yeah, I Prepare don't know. Prepare for midterm. So he was very happy to show us that. And I was goofing around with the kids, uh, just trying to be goofy with them because they, they just seemed to really like having somebody there that wasn't Pakistan. 
I mean, I this is my one, two, three, four. I do this with kids all the time. Let's see if we can get it going here. Yeah, they like doing that. Um, so uh, that was that. We noticed that there were lots of signs with women. Lots. There were signs. These are political posters, and there are signs with women on it. And I asked Shazadi, oh, well, there are women that are running for a political office. And she said, oh, no, those are just the sisters and the wives. So, but at least it's. But it's, it's a beginning. Yeah. Uh, so that evening, the club in Karachi held a party for us at someone's home. And uh, in a lot of countries we visit uh, with Rotary Club, particularly in Africa and in this part of the world, most Rotarians are quite wealthy. I kind of um, joke about it, but in some of these places, it seems like your Rotary Club membership comes with your country club membership. It doesn't make them any less dedicated and it certainly doesn't make them any less generous. But they have huge, lavish, beautiful homes. This was an evening party for, uh, in our honor. Um, next morning, new, fresh newspaper. Most men's slaughter cases end up in pardon after heirs take blood money. Um, I'm not a lawyer. Phil, you probably know what this means. I don't. <laughs> it says most men's slaughter cases end up in pardon after heirs take blood money. So they're not going through the traditional judicial system. Uh, <laughs> All right. Okay. Wait, go back, go back. This is the Sin Club, and it was really, really beautiful. It was sort of in the colonial era of Pakistan, and the Sin Club pictures are all illegal because you're not allowed to take them. You were busted. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's okay. Uh, and this is this is how this is traveling to a restaurant. That's how it happens here. Um, um, roadside, this is what it looks like in, in Pakistan and the countryside. Um, it's very rural and very poor. I like this picture. Here's a woman who's got her rig and it's she's nice. driving. Yeah, she's got it. Uh, we stopped for brunch on the way out to visit a, a mausoleum, I think it was. They wanted to show us that. But every time you go to a restaurant, it, this is out front. Um, and the problem with that is it keeps it kept us at a distance from meeting people and that's something that we like to do to sort of here we are but when we did when we were able to meet people everybody would say where where are you from and we would say well we're from america and 90% of the time, the first thing they said is, oh, thank you so much for coming. Yeah, thanks for thank coming all that way to visit our here. country. We love America. And it's just, you know, and it was it was nice to sort of break down that barrier a little it's bit. It's just planting seeds. Um, and they wanted to show us a, a tomb that was a thousand years old. This is Marissa with uh, Shadzadi. Um, and it was beautiful. Nice architecture. Yeah. We stopped and had lunch at the Rotary Club of Makli and... Uh, they were prepared for us and everyone was um, very hospitable. It was nice, but you get a lot of, this was going outside. This was going on outside the restaurant while we were inside having lunch. Um, here's it. How about that? What is that? Okay. Bananas. Well, those are the bananas. Bananas. And, bananas are being guarded. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, so you can see it's very, there's a, uh, uh, Karachi has 16 million people in it, but once you get outside that, it's a pretty open uh, landscape. And so the challenges of getting around to everybody with uh, the polio vaccine are going to be big. Um, we stopped into a mosque and there were some kids playing and our guys were there. Um, another, another day. Go back, go back, go back. It says, let's engage at opportune time, that Pakistan tells the U.S. You know, we've had a sort of a checkered history with Pakistan. And, you know, Pakistan often gets sort of footballed back and forth between the Eastern Bloc and the Western Bloc. And it's so uh, they wanted to show us one more project before we went to the polio clinic. This is a, uh, a midwife training program that they just started last um, um, 
year and they selected 20 girls from uh, rural communities and they put them through this medical school to learn to be midwives because it's a big problem there with uh, mortality. The problem is that they marry very young and they get pregnant when they're 13 and 14 and 15. And then the problem is a fistula, which you, if you don't know, it's when you're carrying the baby and it tears the wall between the anus or the bladder and you lose control, it smells and you're shunted away. And the baby usually doesn't survive. So it's a huge problem in the country. And the Rotary Club of Pakistan helped to take that problem all. It was, it was pretty incredible. So they're doing a really great job with that. Um, these and here- are the, These are the girls from the rural villages. Uh, they I got together and translated uh, some uh, manuals into Urdu, which is what people read. It, it looks like this when it's side by side with English. You know, it's a, it's a Sanskrit language. Uh, but they were very proud of that, and they put a lot of work into it. They got these incubators uh, from one of the uh, local churches, put up some money for incubators because they have a lot of preemie births there. Um, and uh, so here's the kid who's probably going to walk around because of it. So it's a wonderful project. This club is doing so many things. They had a project with the police department to try and humanize procedures. That was wonderful. Um, and uh, so it was just great to meet them. And uh, be around them here. Lots of signs on the streets all over. It says, our faith, corruption free Pakistan. We are against corruption, are you? There is so much corruption in that country and there's so many signs against it. Um, and I don't know where they're headed, um, but you know, it's nice to be part of a group like Rotary Club that's headed in the right direction. We did get off on our own for 10 minutes once and walk through this. Um, there's the sin hat. There it is, another hat. This guy was really proud of his donkeys. Um, this I didn't understand. This guy was selling Uncle Sam Don't Quit products. Uh, I didn't get a chance to ask him about it, but I <laughs> weren't sure what he was up to. Yeah. Uh, I was getting friendlier with this guy. <laughs> uh, so then we set off downtown to look at the clinic. Now this clinic is, uh, is one that, uh, that our club sponsored and it has to do with training women to get out and go door to door and, uh, and knock on doors and check on vaccinations, that sort of thing. Um, oh, go back. Yeah. I love that picture. <laughs> okay. And I think sometimes when people saw us, they were really surprised. And you, they're like, oh, some wave. This is the neighborhood where the clinic is. Um, and that's probably, it looks like a lot of neighborhoods and a lot of projects we sponsor overseas because that's where the need usually is. Um, so here was the training center. At, um, and I wrote this little thing up here, some before pictures. I don't know if you can see those, um, but it was a building that the city gave over to the Rotary Club. And the Rotary Club said, great, we'll uh, put in some toilets and sinks and such and, and, a, and a place for women to come and see a doctor and also to train outreach workers to finish up the polio. So, uh, planning for the Jamestown Rotary and Karachi Pakistan Club project began over a year ago. There was keen interest in both clubs to develop a shared project that would have maximum impact in this final push to eliminate polio in Pakistan. So these are the before pictures. Um, and our idea was to create uh, a, a partnered project where Jamestown would put in the money to upgrade this location. And then the Karachi Rotary Club would maintain it um, and use it as a training facility. Uh, there are not a lot of women on the streets in Pakistan and particularly in Karachi. Um, so how you get rid of this uh, polio is it's a house to house, door to door thing and it's women. Women can knock on doors, men can't knock on doors there. Uh, so there's some really brave women that are part of this program all over. So, um, so we showed up and uh, for the grand opening here, some of the Rotary Club members uh, that came with us and they had done a splendid job in taking this rundown building. I don't know how they did it for $4,600, but they did. Um, so, um, and here's some of the trainees. Um, What's interesting about the women who work at the clinic is that you, they're 
different religions. Some of them recover completely. Some of them aren't. I, it's a really nice way. And I imagine it has to do with the different areas that they're going into in the neighborhoods. Um, so it was a really nice ceremony. Uh, there were lots of nice people there. Uh, this was a well that we paid to have drilled there so they had clean water. Uh, this is me handing the keys to the restroom over to uh, the head of the clinic. Uh, so it was clean. And it, so they got a really nice clean sink and, uh, uh, and a toilet. That's, that's the after toilet. That's the squat toilet. And there's, a, there's something to clean yourself with. It's a Mandy style. So you pour water into it. There isn't a before picture because there was no before toilet. That's yeah. the new toilet. But this makes it much cleaner and better for everybody. Um, we did go do some vaccinating that day in the afternoon when we were dedicating the clinic. Um, and I don't know how many of you have done polio vaccinations. Um, we were doing it in India about five years ago. What it is, is a plastic vial that has to be chilled. You take the cap off and it's two drops on the tip of the tongue. And then depending on where you are, the finger goes into the purple dye. So the kid knows he's been done. So, um, so it's pretty simple. It doesn't taste good. It's bitter. Yeah, we tasted it. it was all. Uh, and then I made a little speech to everybody thanking them and uh, telling them how, um, how grateful Jamestown was to be part of this, this sort of final push to clean it up and, uh, and how great you all were. And um, so it was a, Nice, really nice afternoon. And here are some of the new trainees. So again, part of this is vaccination, but a lot of the push is to get trainees out going door to door, knocking on doors, and they have to be women because there's nobody in Pakistan that's gonna open the door to a strange man, especially if it's a woman that's on the other side. So it just it just works better that way. Oh, and here, and, that, and the squad came too. Um, I have no idea how much this costs. Um, to run these guys around every day following us. And I know that the Rotary Club on the other end spent a huge amount of money uh, on keeping us safe there. And we sort of poked fun at them a little bit, but it was they were very serious about it. So we- When we were in the car, David would want to take a picture. He wanted to roll the windows down. He wasn't allowed to do that. Windows up. Pakistan, yeah. So um, this oh, is the beach. This is about 20 minutes away from the Sindh Hotel where we were, Sindh Club, where we were staying. And that was when Solomon and Zena Yeah, took us to the beach. They took us, they, they, we left the squad and they took us in their car and we went to the beach. They got in trouble for it a little bit, but it was great. We had a camel ride on the beach. Yeah. yeah this is, great. And this is a view from the driver's seat. And there were people there that could actually come up to us and talk with us because yeah. we didn't have anybody around us. That was nice. It was great. Uh, on the way back, we stopped at a mosque, another mausoleum or something. But again, what happened here was we went in the front gates and the squad did not because there are no weapons allowed inside. So it gave us, this was our best chance to meet people from Pakistan. And it was overwhelming. Oh, these guys were so proud of their new shoes. Uh, Uh, but we met a lot of people who just wanted to come up and have their pictures taken with, with us. And uh, they were just, it was, they'd say, where are you from? And we'd say, we're from America. And you came all the way to visit our country. Thank you. And um, so. Oh, she, please take a picture with my baby. Uh, the last night we were there, there was, they had their regular uh, meet club meeting. They meet on Tuesday nights. So uh, they, we were the guests, and uh, it was in somebody's side yard with an enormous home, but it was nice, and uh, we felt very welcomed, and um, here are some of the club members, um, and the head table, and so I had to give a speech, and if you see what my content was, I don't know if you can see this sign, it says Jamestown there. <laughs> And there's a little dot right there. So I told them all about our club and the things we were doing. And they were fascinated to hear about that. And we talked about maybe doing another project with them someday. Uh, 
I just got some word from JW, who's one of the fellows that work in Mons, and uh, Shadzadi that the training, the first group of trainees is just about finished. So that that will be a great project that works, and we're really looking forward to hearing more about that. Uh, just a couple of stray shots around. Um, looks like they really know how to load a truck. <laughs> I don't know what's in there, but. Um, Five on a motorcycle. Yeah, not a helmet in sight. Okay. Kids. I love this picture. The men are just like hanging out. The women have stuff on their head that they're carrying. Yeah, right. Um, this was a Hindu temple. And it's interesting because in Karachi, there's the Shia, there's the Sunni. You go outside of town a little bit and there was a Hindu temple that was really interesting. Yeah, and it says live to give. I don't know anything about being a Hindu, but, uh, but they have cows there. Um, at the temple and I kind of uh, escaped and, and David escaped and I was with the squad and I don't know how you did that but you got away yeah and, and I met all these kids they were nice kids and um, yeah this is a Shia temple and she goes to the next picture it was just beautiful. And we were taking pictures on the outside and it happened that there was prayer going on and they invited me in, but David wasn't allowed to go in. I think it was women's day or it something. It was women. And when you go, and I went in, it was beautiful on the inside and I was staying towards the back and they were doing a kind of a prayer chant. And I sat for a minute and they beckoned me to come up and to come closer and to come closer. And then I was with the women and they were, I was sort of sitting and they were just sort of moving together like that. Lovely, lovely women. Mm. Well, Go and tarp skunks. somehow there's a tarp skunk hat floating over there too. Uh, <laughs> how did that get there, Russ? Did you have something to do with that? <laughs> Anyway, he's feeling the vibe and he's ready to go. So that was good. Um, then it was uh, time to get out of the Pakistan uh, airspace there. So we had to take a COVID test. And I, a lot of you have had these, right? We were so. told, JW said, don't worry about the COVID test. You will pass. And we looked and he said, no, no, you will pass. Don't worry about the COVID test. And then Shazadi said, you know, they have to take a COVID test when they get to Thailand also. We, we spent almost $500 in COVID tests. And then David said, no, don't worry. I'd rather be quarantined in Thailand than in Pakistan. Pakistan. <laughs> but we passed. Yeah. All right. So um, this was a great project. I, we wanted to share that with you. And, and it's tomorrow? Tomorrow is Women's International. And this project is, is driven by women. I mean, the club is half men and half women, but the women are the ones in Pakistan that put this project together. And these are the women that are out there doing this. Um, and here's, you know, here's a picture that's just, here's a police guards, a health worker in Karachi. I didn't take this picture, but it's not unusual. Uh, but here are the women in this that we've seen that are gonna be part of this project and helping to get rid of polio. And uh, so I think we all have to take our hats off to women all week and all month long, right? Yes. Um, so this is a good project. This was our money that we put into it and spread it pretty thin and well. And we just want to let you know that the, that the project in Karachi was a really great success. So if you have any questions. The project. Thank you, thank you. The project was successful as far as polio goes. But what also was really successful is for them to see Americans out there doing good, regular people doing good, not what you hear from the media, but meeting people face to face. And I think that's what Rotary does also. And that's almost as important as polio, I think. Yeah. But I'm not going to Afghanistan. Okay. okay. What? Uh, so if you have any questions uh, about uh, what we were doing there or, or polio in general or um, the Jamestown Club and who planned, yes, Walt.
That is a really good question. Especially um, with COVID. Hmm? Uh, the question was, how can we accurately judge how we're doing with polio eradication in a place like Pakistan or Afghanistan where the information is so hard to come by? The last, not, last year we have uh, is, is 2019, and we were down to 347 cases. But because of COVID and other things, we're kind of shooting in the dark here and hoping it hasn't jumped up. But uh, WHO does a lot of monitoring with that. And uh, the CDC even gets involved with that. So um, the idea is that if we get it down to zero and we keep it at zero for a couple of years, then that comes off the list. But there's a very, very permeable border between Afghanistan and Pakistan, and especially with the Pashtuns who are um, more of the local tribes. People walk back and forth all the time. It's just like, um, about five years ago, Merce and I went to India to volunteer to vaccinate because uh, India had been certified, but then a lot of people came across the Pakistani border and it started cropping up again. So we had to vaccinate something like 140 million kids under the age of four in two weeks. We had Rotarians from all over the world doing that. So it's, you know, you got to get it. And what's the stat if we don't get it in five years? Well, that's what... That's what WHO said. If you don't get this and you just leave it alone in five years, you'll have 250,000 cases all around the world again. So it's very, it's, yeah, yeah. Good question. Anybody else? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're really happy to do that and share it back with you because it's it's not just good doing good things abroad, but bringing back energizes this club and empowers everybody to keep going. So we're this really happy. This club is the best thing that ever happened to us, aside from getting married. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know. I can't see that. Okay. Great. Oh. Oh. Sue Houston. Oh yeah, Sue Jones, we have a flag for you that you can put in the collection from Karachi. Okay, well thank you all very thank much you. for listening and being here. And uh, it was nice to see you all. David and Marissa, of course, one of Rotary's major international programs, as you well know, is the eradication of polio. So we will make a donation in honor of you both that will vaccinate uh, four children who will never experience polio in their life. Remembering this year's Rotary International theme, serve to change lives, caring for and serving others is the best way to live because it changes not only other people's lives, but also our own. And before we're adjourned, we had a great crowd today. If you enjoyed lunch, tell your friends, let's get everybody back in session. We're adjourned. Mm -hmm.